should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Right, that's quite enough of that. Um, <laughs> Do, do you know, like, this is a new. Is this your, every every year you're doing that, aren't you? That's every time we're recording a video in January. That's going to be your thing. Yeah, but I don't do this every year. 2020. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck you, 2020. Fuck you. Let's just flip it, the bird. Goodbye. And the fucking horse that you rode in on. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking. You miserable, <sighs> disgusting, miserable mother. What the fucking. Of- Bastard of a year. Anyway, it's gone. It's gone, mate. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. And now, Goodbye. now we look forward to a new year. 2021. 2021. Oh, it's going to be a good year, mate. I hope it's going to be a good year. We have worked together now for about 20 odd years, haven't yeah. we? 20 years, known each other for 23 years. And we have made together... A series of um, of video games, Uplink, mm. Darwinia, Defcon, mm. Multiwinia, which I've been thinking about recently because um, I've been playing a lot of Worms over mm. Christmas with mm. the family on PS4, and it reminded me about how good Multiwinia was and could have been. Mm. Um, I'll, I, you know, I might even see if I can fire up a copy on my just good old-fashioned fun multiplayer. Yeah, exactly. Local multiplayer fun with your family. But anyway, mm. um, nobody else agrees. Um, so after after Multiwinia, we made Prison Architect. That was our our, our biggest, biggest selling game, wasn't it? And then um, Scanner Sombra came after that. Mm. And all of those games are uh, unequivocally, universally uh, considered to be the best indie games of all time <laughs> by all independent. That's it. That's the top commentators. Six. Top six right? of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's everyone definitely. agrees. <laughs> so. Um, and you and I have sort of been at the core of that. There have been lots of other people helping us as, um, as we've, we've made these different games. But at the core, it's been you and me, right? Mm. This, oh, fucking hell, William. That was William. <laughs> fucking 2020. Just fuck, <laughs> 2020. Close the door and just yeah. fucking leave. Shut the door on your way out. <laughs> He's going to do it again. Will, I'm trying to make a video, buddy. I know. No, no mate, seriously, it's not hey, funny. Well. Go away, go away. Go away. Wait. Hang on, hang on. There's no way to treat your son in there. Right. right. That's not what I'm meant to do, actually, is it? What I'm meant to do is be like a calm and loving father, mm. where I'm meant to go, oh, hello, mate. Step this way, young man. Let me impart some knowledge upon you. Never yeah, a borrower what's... nor a lender be. <laughs> <laughs> now turn, wave at the camera. And say, like and subscribe and slap the yeah. air so that we can that's put right. graphics over it. Like every other fucking young YouTuber. <laughs> that's right. That I now that's... have to watch, thanks to my kids. He's got kids. Now, now so where were we? We're trying to do the introduction. That's right. Yeah. Jesus. We were making a bit of a meal of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to do it. Right. So we've made these games. However, what we, we don't just churn out a game and then churn out another game and churn out another game. That's not really how it works. And this series is about the games that didn't make it and mm. the and the reasons why and the problems with that. Last month before Christmas, we made one on a space building game called Order of Magnitude. And I think today we're going to look at a space building game. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. That's a brilliant intro. Is there, is there a theme? Can we just... Because um, we're doing all we, of this... We're not going to just release a whole year's worth of space building games, <laughs> if that's what you're secretly asking. I'm just okay. asking that, yeah. Yeah. This this is this is the game that came immediately after Order of Magnitude, right? And, okay. Um, so I, I I looked at Order of Magnitude and I thought, what don't I like? Right, that's a long list. Let's be honest, right? And I don't like the scale of it. I don't like the fact we're confined to the South Pole of the Moon. Um, I don't like the building mechanics. I don't like Unity, quite frankly, and I don't like your face. <laughs> <laughs> He said it. Because <laughs> Order of Magnitude, Order of Magnitude was the game that we covered in our last video. That's right. So you can watch that, and um, yeah. if you choose, you can buy uh, or donate to Warchild through our website and get access to Order of Magnitude and also all of the other ones that are coming in the future. We promise not all of them are going to be space builders. Mm, some of them are, though. Some of them. <laughs> all right. So 
Let's look at space bots, shall space we? Space bots. Okay, I can see this coronavirus. Is, this is space. Yes, <laughs> this is, this is uh, May two thousand and eighteen. So I was very prescient. You can see a giant space coronavirus flying across our across a, a derelict planet because everyone's left because the planet's under lockdown now. Right. Right. They're, all, they're all living in these underground pit pillars or something. I don't know. It's a continuation of order of magnitude. Um, it's it's another attempt to make a space building, space economy construction game, um, but with a very different scale um, and very much on the level of entire planetary systems. Um, but I also wanted to do something much more nerdy as well. Now, you know, I am quite a bit nerdy occasionally. Yeah, I have you know, noticed. Occasionally, I, occasionally I do nerd. So... Um, I decided that in this game, what I would do is I would focus on um, automated robots and I would make them programmable by the player. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So the entire, your entire interaction with the game world would be through programming fleets, giant fleets of robots that can operate on a star system level. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I remember this. I, I think this is, this is interesting, you know, because when you and I first well sort of started getting interested in computing i suppose you, you when you turned on your machine you got a prompt yeah you know you, you had to type in code nowadays that's hidden more and more and more and there are definitely very good attempts i think of making programming accessible raspberry pi and um scratch and so there's but i think there's a really fine line between trying to simulate programming in a game in a way that is fun and just learning to code yeah Do you know what i mean absolutely absolutely and and there's there are other games out there where you just have a full-blown programming language built in yeah um, and they have the most potential but also hardly anyone can play them yeah exactly I mean, even even people like me will play them and actually kind of dislike them because it's too much like the day job <laughs> that's right yeah absolutely it's, too, yeah. it's like why don't why do i want to do more programming yeah, um, where's the line? You know, yeah, where, where's and the line? Other people have tried to make games that have got pseudo programming in, you know, sort of logic but not programming. And I guess Factorio is a good example of a game that has does kind of have engineering style programming in, but yeah. it's visualized, you know, it's it's positional. Um, should we dive in and see how the basics work? Yes. Let's go to the very first scenario of the game. And this is kind of I made a series of scenarios, and these are designed to teach you how to play the game. All right, this is all about learning. And so by me playing them, I'll hopefully explain it to you. Here's a, here's a robot, all right? This fellow up here. He doesn't do anything yet. And I can click on plus, right? And get my mothership to create robots, right? There we go. Got some robots. Okay, yeah, yeah. See these guys? Yeah. But they don't have any uh, program yet. So I need to program them to do things. Um, now, the instructions tell us we're surrounded by minerals, right? There's minerals all around, so we want to get our robots to gather these minerals. So when I click on this um, little icon representing those robots, you see I get a little programming interface. Yeah. And I'm going to give them the simplest program that I can give any robot, um, which is... So these are the commands I can issue. I want to fly to the nearest minerals, right? and then grab. And then I'm going to fly back to the mothership. All right? And you see, I'm just doing it all by dragging. I'm not doing any typing yeah. here. And then I'm going to do a give. Right? And that's my program. Now, if I, when I say commit, that program is instantly flashed onto all four of those robots. Right? And I've clicked on one, and you can see that it's actually running that program now in a loop. See? Yep, yep. And I can also tell that this is written in system IV. Yes, yes. I have a, a love-hate relationship with Unity, and um, Order of Magnitude was a Unity game, and yeah. I love Unity, and I think Unity is wonderful for a lot of developers, um, but then I, if, if you catch me on a different day, I would tell you that I fucking hate Unity, and I never, ever want to see it again, because I think Unity it, uh, drives me up the wall like yeah. nothing else in the world. <laughs> and I, th I, think, I think in part that's because you are always somebody who knows what what they're capable of achieving you know has an idea and mm. thinks now i want to do that and unity doesn't always no no abstraction is going to make that is always going to be easy for you to do that you yeah, know yeah 
and 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 I think that that's that bouncing between do we use something like unity that gives a lot of benefit so you can deploy to multiple platforms and all, all the rest of it but you lose that real creative spark and i i yeah think... it takes the limits away it gives you it gives you 3d and it gives you real physics and it gives you all this kind of stuff that you saw in order of magnitude like building a moon base in 3d on the south pole of the moon it kind of gives you all of that that we couldn't do yeah. in system iv but it takes a lot away as well and it takes away I don't know, it takes away, there's an element of imagination to me, you know, that is taken away by Unity. Yeah, um, yeah. Th- not for everyone, I'm not saying for everyone, I'm saying for no, me. No, 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 absolutely. Right, when I absolutely. use Unity, yeah. I feel really constrained by what it can do, unless I'm trying to make a 3D third-person <laughs> action-adventure game, yeah. which is and perfect I've... for. All right, chapter two then, right? So same basic idea, here's our mothership. We still want to be gathering minerals, right? There's a little bit of resource gathering going on here, but now right. the minerals are trapped in these asteroids, right, and are not easily accessible. So if we make some gatherers, right, they don't have anything to do, right? You see they're just sat there with a little question mark over their head yeah. because their program says fly to the nearest minerals and put it in the mothership. So what we need to do is we need to make a new robot. So if I click on this plus button, I've now got a new blank robot template, right? Here he is. And for the first time, I can actually edit his physical properties as well. All right, so I'm going to call him a driller bot. All right. Yep. What do you think he's going to do? A driller bop would yeah. be like, I, I, I was just going to try and do some drill rap there, oh, mate, but I just couldn't just, even, I wouldn't even know where to d- begin. Just pretend that you did and, and that I edited it out. Right? I don't even know what drill is. <laughs> it's urban, yeah, very urban. I think that's I probably think. for the best. Yeah. So, so I don't... these are commands, right? So you see our commands, we can't do any of them, right? We can't do any drilling because it says it requires drill. We can't do fly to because it says it requires right. engine. Yeah. So if I give our guys an engine... Fly to is now a command that we can issue. So I can say fly to nearest asteroid. Right? That seems like a decent starting point. And it's pretty simple. I'm going to attach a drill term like this. In fact, let's attach two. Why not? Um, and I'm going to give him... Are you sure battery. we're not an art-driven company? Yeah, I'm sure we're not an art-driven company. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, mate, you're going to love these robots by the end. Right? They have real charm. Right. Fly to nearest asteroid, drill. It's pretty simple. Yeah. All right. So now, if I create a couple of driller bots, right, they'll start with that. They'll follow that command, and when this, when they've drilled an asteroid out completely, they will um, move on to the next one, and then you'll see our gatherer robots come along and do their yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just make some more gatherers. So there's a count of the amount of metal on board the mothership, which is up here. Metal twenty-seven. You probably can't see it. No, I can see it's, it. I can it's see like it. Yeah. Smallest, Thirty. It's going up. Smallest yep. possible font I could find. <laughs> Sorry, we're all about user interfaces. <laughs> yeah. So you know these these commands for how many? You, you don't really build a bot. You sort of say how many you want. Um, so I can say I want four driller bots, but for gatherer robots, if I press this button, it means infinite, right? So my mothership now, whenever it has enough metal, it'll just create another gatherer bot. Okay. Right. And so the number of gatherer bots just goes up and up and up as they, you know, and you get that runaway effect where. You're getting more and more uh, economy on the go because you've got lots of robots all operating right. at once. There we go. Which was, you know, which which was also a theme from Order of Magnitude, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. the idea that you started small and then you're moving up to entire armies of these yeah. swarms, really, I suppose, would be the right... Yeah. The right terminology, wouldn't it? You know. Swarms are the aim, basically. I mean, the um, it's, that is very very similar to the sort of Factorio or order of magnitude concept that you. I wanted you to start from the smallest possible thing, you know. Yeah. Which is literally one little robot with a, a tiny little program in his head, and then by the end of it, have you know this huge expansive process going on. Yeah. All right. So similar sort of idea, right? <clears throat> We've got let's send some driller robots out. We've got some new modules that we can use. So we now have a storage module. Now, the reason why this is interesting at this point is because this is the first time I'm going to do some actual intricate programming. All right, so I'm going to update the gather robot, and I'm going to put these storage boxes inside him, right? He's like a little Wally robot. That's how I imagine him. Mm-hmm. Right? And you'll see that his, you may not have noticed, but his, his mass has gone up and his speed has gone down. So we could put another engine on if we wanted to make him run a bit faster. Now, so he can now store more than one mineral on board at any one time, all right? Um, So instead of just flying to a mineral and grabbing it and flying back to the mothership, what I want to do is I want him to fly to the nearest mineral, 
and then use this new command, put it in my cargo. Right? See that? Yep. But I want him to do that forever. Right? I want him to do that in a loop until the cargo is full. So yep. you did programming, didn't you? I did do programming, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need some logic. Right? So I'm going to drag in the first uh, conditional. Right? And the condition is going to be, well, when do I want him to be flying to minerals and grabbing them? Right? If my cargo is not empty, not full, not full. That's what I want, isn't it? If my cargo is not full. Well, that's the same as if cargo is empty. No, it's not. If cargo is empty, that means I'm carrying nothing. If my cargo is not full, it means I'm not carrying Oh, okay, carrying no, you're right. Load. Yes, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So you got the full list there. So if my cargo is not full, and I can drag these things around, right? So I can make this a little loop. So if my cargo is not full, fly to minerals, put it in the cargo. Yeah, okay. And then if um, the opposite happens, well, that's an else. So I want to have a little else in there. That's when I want to fly back to the mothership and do a transfer cargo, which gives the mothership everything that I'm carrying. Right? And I Shouldn't that be a while loop? No, because it's automatically a while loop, right? They run this program oh, forever. Right, See, this is, this is the problem, the end, isn't it? They, when they get to the end, they just restart the program. Yeah, this is the problem. You know, it's effectively recreating a new programming language with its own yeah, that's right. idiosyncrasies. You know, that, well, that I, made you... a, I made a decision not... <clears throat> hmm. Let's try that again. I think maybe we need a, uh, a grab in there. Yeah, there we go. I made a decision not to just bring in a programming language that already existed because I really didn't want this to be a game where you would be typing the program in. Like I did want mm. more than 10 people to be able to play this game. Um, so you can see now that they can behave much more efficiently now. They can bring back whole loads of cargo at a time, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and I, I really did want it to be this more kind of drag and drop visual style of programming rather than, you know, like a typing in because, you know, as soon as you have to type in a program, you make the game much less accessible. Um, let's skip forward a few chapters, all right? Let's go to something a bit more defensive. Um, so I always, we... I always felt, you know, and I always felt with this one that I just didn't like. We, we, this is another thing that we've we've learned from the past, right? Getting a core game loop mm. working and fun is critical. You know that thing that you're going to do. Hundred thousand times within the game, mm. with with, with uh, Prison Architect, it was uh, placing a component to be built. You know, mm. um, with Defcon, it was uh, issuing orders. You know, something like that. The thing that you do again and again and again. Yeah. And and that that needs to be very simple, and it needs to be and it needs to tweak those pleasure centers right at the beginning before you can start to layer in anything else on top yeah. of it. And I always felt with this that. What you've just shown me just leaves me cold. Yeah, you know, and for for me personally, it just yeah. And I think uh, that we need to be honest that that's one of the critical problems of this game that you didn't yeah. like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But not that I want to throw you under the bus entirely, but um, I don't know. It's, this is a painful experience for me for this one, more than order of magnitude. See, order of magnitude never really worked as a game. Right, it was always in development. We were always trying stuff. But I never felt like this is really going to work, right? But this game, I really felt this game was going to work, you know? Right. I was convinced. Um, and maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Well, I was obviously wrong. It didn't work. Well, um, one of the things about this whole project is that perhaps, you know, something will, will, will tweak and you will find a different way through the, the maze, mm, you know? Yeah, maybe, maybe somebody will say something about this. Maybe everybody in the YouTube comments will say, Chris, don't listen to Mark. He's, he's totally wrong. You know, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with that, you know, because what I like and don't like it, it isn't really a factor, if that makes sense. You know, it's, uh, and it's also one of the hard things about making games, you know. Yeah, sort of. I mean, we're, we're quite an, ins we're an insular developer, aren't we? I and mean, it's very, it's, it's difficult to work on a game when no one else in the company likes it. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, Tom one, had the that... same response. Tom was like, mm, yeah, I don't really want to do programming of robots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's bring in some more. Let's, um, let's do an import. Let's bring in some more robot types. So here's a little batch of different robots that do different things, right? So this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a bigger scenario now. Um, we're gonna have a stack of driller robots, and we're gonna have gatherers. So in this particular scenario, we've now got a little planetary body in the middle, and we've got these things in you. These are like asteroids, you know? 
uh, little planetoid yep. things, and we're going to be attacked by a load of like hostile robots at some point in the future, um, quite soon actually. So before that happens, we need to um, build some defenses. And this is the first level where we start actually building things. So on these little planetoids, see there's a new, a new build button at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Um, I can start to build um, facilities on these asteroids. So here's some solar panels and here's some yeah, so here, gun turrets. Here's the kind of order of magnitude coming back in, isn't it? Yeah, so now we're starting, to, order... roll in, we're starting to roll in the purpose of it in the, in the first time. Right? All, everything so far has been about gathering minerals. Yeah. But that's really just the starting point. And you can see they've actually, uh, they've actually mined out about a third of the asteroid belt already. You know? like already this came after OMM, didn't it? Yeah, this was the game immediately after OOM. Because this does solve some of OOM's problems, you know, it, it solves the, mm. because you can create these robots, and I did like this, you know, I did like the the way in which you start to see now all of these little robots out yeah. and... Yeah, and, so and I've just bought in, here's a fabricator robot now, so a fabricator yeah. robot is a little robot just like any other, with, um, with a sort of uh, glue gun on his arm that can fabricate anything. Very similar to the robots that we saw in Order of Magnitude, right? Or any other construction worker robot. They're like the workman in Prison Architect. You know? Right. But they have their own program. In an earlier tutorial, I uh, developed this program. And um, so they're essentially going to the mothership and taking the metal that's been returned by all these other gatherer robots, right? And they're starting to build our first surface facility, which is going to be like a gun platform. All right. So this is where we're starting to see the artwork from that game I was telling you about, Hard Vacuum. Please go over and buy Hard Vacuum or donate to them <laughs> or whatever in, it is. <laughs> it was in development in 1993 and it was right. cancelled, so I'm pretty sure that ship has sailed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we built like a little gun battery, and you see to see the beginnings of uh, the beginnings of um, construction happening. All right, so if I zoom out now, you'll see we've got hostiles. Right? See these guys? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are hostile robots, um, and. They're pretty simple. All they're going to do is they're going to fly towards, they're going to fly towards the planet at the center, and try and blow it up. See, this is something else that I think you do brilliantly, right? It's a bunch of triangles yeah. on a screen, right? <laughs> and yet I know they're hostile, right? Yeah. Because because well, they're, they're triangles, they're, they're right? They're flashing and they're saying hostile. And they're flashing and they're yellow. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't read it. Says hostile, right? Yeah. But yeah. I just no, I can just look at that immediately, and I think you're so good at that. Oh, thanks. You know, you're creating like a a sense of impending doom, you know, but from a triangle, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's... Well, it's and, primitive and... rendering, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's my preferred... It's, like, it's back to the Unity question again. Like, I actually prefer working in primitives, yeah, squares and yeah. rectangles and unshaded textures and virtually zero sprites than working in full 3D in Unity. Oh, fuck, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking here, too much. Here come the triangles. All right, so what we need to do... Um, I balls it up a little bit. Um, let's do, let me create that from scratch. So I have got some gun turrets, but there you know, these asteroids are orbiting. And what I need to do instead is make a suicide bomber um, to take out these robots before my gun turrets get in range. So I'm going to make a new robot type. And I'm going to call him Bomber, right? And he's going to have explosives on board like this. The more explosives I put in him, the bigger pop he'll make. And I'm going to give him more engines. And that's all he needs. He's going to do fly to nearest hostile and then use explosives. Let's hope that works. Smoke me a kipper. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just make one and see what happens. Is that him? Yeah. There we go. Right, let's have a few of him. It's it's quite wasteful on their on resources. So that, so you, the suicide bombers they obviously explode and take themselves out at the same time. So, but that's very evocative evocative language. I mean, they're effectively missiles, right? Yeah, they're 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 programmed suicide programmed, <laughs> but they're robots. They're alive. They've got a little face. Look at his little <laughs> They've face. They've got a little face. They're yeah, like little okay. Wally robots packed with yeah, explosives. Okay. All right. Yeah. You heathen! Can you imagine little Wally flying towards a? <laughs> hostile you you did you said that <laughs> i told you they were missiles the good news is that when a robot is destroyed it just blasts metal all over the place so we now have an influx of easily accessible resources 
So yeah. our gatherers, all these are our gatherer robots now, flooding in and collecting all that resource. Um, did our gun turrets do anything? All right, let's let's drop the number of bombers down or missiles, if you prefer. No, it's suicide bombers, mate. Whatever you whatever you <laughs> call it. <laughs> Kamikaze. So you can see these guys down here. These gun turrets are uh, firing now. I never got around to putting sound effects in the game. I never got around to putting any sort of particle effects or anything like that into the game. Yeah. yeah, which I think is actually a mistake, like even for prototypes, because yeah, I think so too. Y your imagination only has so much potential, you know. Well, you're trying to evaluate something on the response that you have when you see it, right? Yeah. And um, Tom and I, I don't, we're not that good at at, at understanding what that response is going to be like when everything's done, you know. I'm not really a guy yeah. that wants to see the rushes, you know. And you're <laughs> quite sensitive when when we when we don't react in the way you're ho you're hoping. Yeah, you know? I remember demonstrating this game to you and Tom, and just being like, it was like I could have been at the um, uh, what's it called, <laughs> you know, Mount Rushmore. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know the one that, what's the name of the? It's Mount Rushmore. That's where isn't the it? president. Yeah, well, you know what? You know they have the static faces of the presidents just. <laughs> That's what it was like demonstrating this fucking game to you guys, right? I thought you showed me this yeah. one in BAFTA. I thought we were, we were at BAFTA. Yeah, and that's what it was like. It, yeah, it, was it? Yeah. I tried really hard to be nice to you that day. I yeah. don't think I was as bad as you're making out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the thing is that I have to remind myself that you guys hated DEF CON when I showed it to you. Did we? You hated Did we? it. You guys were like, there's nothing that's here, man. Insane. There's nothing. This is just like, nobody is going to want to play this game. You know, there's no, there's no depth to this. There's no complexity to this. You know, it's trivial. Right. And then Defcon ended up being like a oh, second or third biggest selling game or something. Was that when you were supposed to be finishing Darwinia? Yeah, there was that. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be finishing. So, so just, so just to put me a bit of context, was that was that when you'd spent three years on a game and we needed to launch it desperately? That's right. Yeah, I think to pitch Tom was game. busy. Tom was busy flogging his CDs on the street corner <laughs> to try and raise <laughs> money right. to pay that's the right. rent. Yeah. Oh, that's look at right. this. This is the programmer in the gatherers. This is the programmer in the gatherer robots now. It's gotten quite a lot more advanced. You know, since we last last messed with it, I'm trying to get across that there's got a lot more possibility in these robots. You know, once you yeah, actually yeah, definitely. once you actually know what you're doing with them. Um, so this is an interesting scenario. Where I'm not actually going to play this one. I'm just going to show it to you. Um, where this is our mothership, um, and for the first time ever, there's actually another mothership in the same asteroid belt. All right, and they're now running. Right. They've got different types of robots. The game doesn't really tell you what these robots are, but they've got they're programmed in the same language. They have the same capabilities. And you can kind of see that they're just on the exponential growth curve, uh, like a motherfucker. You know, they're yeah, just they're just yeah. mining away constantly. They're mining the asteroid belt out, um, and so you have to kind of do the same, mine the asteroid belt because you always you always start with virtually no resources. So you have to start building your economy, but then eventually you have to transition into combat and um, missile robots or suicide bombers or whatever you want to call them, and then eventually gun turrets and emplacements where, you, and then eventually. You try and corner the mothership until it can't produce anything anymore, you know. Yeah. And then you've won. It's one. It's another one of those situations where it's like take what you've learned and that, and now try and use it in a combative scenario. Yes, you know? exactly. Putting you under pressure. Yeah, exactly. Let's skip forward to um, terraforming. Yes. Let's, uh, let's try again. Terraforming. Yeah. So. I actually want the player to be colonizing and terraforming entire planets, right? Remember Star Trek um, Wrath of Khan? Yeah, Genesis device. Genesis device. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Why can't we program a Genesis device, right? Why can't I build a robot whose purpose is to fly down to the planet and start a chain reaction, which maybe involves mining resources, producing facilities, you know, and is all governed by a, a, a program that the player has written, right? And you send one down, and then you come back a hundred years later, and the planet's terraformed, and there's like monkeys swinging between the trees. Get these people out! <laughs> That's total recall. Yeah, yeah, but you've got to terraform Mars, haven't you? Oh right. <laughs> so this is so in this scenario, your aim is to terraform this planet, right? And I can mess with these planets. I can cheat, and I can changed the amount of water they have available to them like this yeah right. it's brilliant it's good it's, it's, a, it's a, a planetary planet. model yeah it, yeah it's not exactly no man's sky but it's the same sort of idea just in yeah. 2d um 
and I can uh, turn it into a photo. There you go. There's the uh, <laughs> there's the Wrath of Khan effect. Yeah. All right. right. So I've had my I've had my um, drillers and gatherers and stuff do some do some gathering for me. So I've got some minerals on board the mothership. Yeah. Now I've modified my gatherer robots and I've given them a little booster rocket as well, so they can also do atmospheric air entry. So if I land my ship on the planet now. When those gather robots are ready to come back, they will do their own little landing on the planet, um, and uh, and that's how. So we're going to get we're going to we're going to continue getting more and more resources from those gatherers. Is what I'm saying. That process continues. Now on the planet surface, you can see that there's already uh, water on this planet surface. So, but there's no atmosphere, right? There's no breathable atmosphere. So this this yeah. planet isn't habitable yet. So we're going to start building. We're going to start building a facility down here that's going to fix that. Um, so let's do, let's build some water pumps, right? So you can see we've got some more available buildings to us now. So I'm going to slap down some water pumps like this, a little grid of them. And I'm going to make some fabricator robots like this. So fabricator robots, you remember, they're pretty simple. They just, they rely on our mothership as a source of metal. And then they just fly to anything that we've requested to be built, and then they yep. just do it. You know, and they just it. It. Um, We're also going to need some electricity, so let's create some little solar panel array over here. You can see we've got our own little construction project going on over here now. Let's move out of the way. Now I need to connect these up so that they are passing resources to each other. So I can create a little relay like this. It connects everything on one side to everything on the other side. Let's have more fabricators. So you see these things down here are screaming for power, right? So yeah, yeah. Unpowered. <clears throat> All right, we've got solar panels, and now we get power, right? Power flows down the line, goes to our little um, water pumps, and they start filling up. Now, there's no graphics, right? Don't get too excited. The little <laughs> water bar fills up to signify there is water. Right. Um, what are we actually going to do with that water? We're going to use an oxygen tower. An oxygen tower requires power and water, um, and then it evaporates that water into the atmosphere. Right, and that's how you that's how you start the process of terraforming. Let's connect those up. All right. So you can see we've got we've now got water flowing from our water pumps. Nice. And it's flowing up to our oxygen towers. Right. And then that's now pumping oxygen into the air. Now you can do your Arnie Schwarzenegger impression. All right. Get these people out! <laughs> Thanks for that, man. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> right, so now we have a whole solar system. All right. It's actually modeled, it's kind of like our solar system, but not really. You can see we've got a couple of inner planets. We've got an Earth-like planet, and we've got an asteroid belt that's just dying to be mined. Yeah. All right. and we've got some gas giants on the outside as well. So it's like, again, it's a much bigger game world you know, that we're looking at now. Previously, we were looking at just one planet, right? And this is the planet that I've been working on, right? And you can see that there's now a whole bunch of different robots all working in unison. Each different colored robot is doing its own job. And there's now a bunch of facilities. There's now automated mining facilities on the planet's surface that are extracting minerals from the planet's surface. Um, and there's water gathering going on over here right, on mass. And we've got farms now, right? This has now got a breathable atmosphere on this planet. So these are kind of symbolically farms. And so everything everything on the planet's surface is just a like a black box, you know, that takes water in and energy in yeah. um, and produces food and uses up work. And you can see for the first time, this is about as far as I got in the game before I started giving up. We've got the right. beginnings of human cities starting to appear. Yeah, yeah. Right? The beginnings of colonized areas where... People have arrived by a, uh, a colony ship or a generation ship or something like that. They've set down on this planet that our robots have prepared for them. And you can see they've started building little towns as well and connecting them up by roads. This is kind of like where the end game was going to be. So you've got these huge fleets of robots all in service of making these planets habitable and usable by people. You know, mm -hmm. And that's just one planet. And it has a little moon orbiting it as well. And you have other planets... Um, and that was kind of as far as I got um, in, and this isn't a scenario, this is kind of like the you know, the main game, if you like, you know, the, yeah. the, the sandbox mode of the game, build whatever you like. Um, 
And that is Space Bots in a nutshell. Cool. Ooh. Cool. So I think it's very interesting because I think that I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to go as far as to say it's all your fault and it always has been. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far, but you couldn't care less about this game. And I could tell all the way through development that this game didn't work on you on any level, you know, and it was, it was always like an uphill struggle. And I started to dread demonstrating this game to you because I knew that I would get nothing out of you when I demonstrated yeah, right. it, you know? It's, it was like the opposite of Prison Architect, where we could just talk for hours about incarceration yeah. and prisons and colonies and stuff like that, you know? It's a completely different sort of game. No, I, I, and I think it's because, and I, and I, you know, I've watched the demo unfold and, I, and, I've, and I've felt the same way now that I felt before. <laughs> Yeah, the, the 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 real question for me over this is is the is the why you know where are you where are you going what what mm. is what is happening next and and I I could never get excited over a bunch of components on the floor if you like you know a bunch of Lego blocks mm. which is which is kind of what I see this as you know like a if 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 this like the pitch was never yeah. complete, and that and that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted to know why. What's the, what's the driving force? You know, I I couldn't see. I couldn't see the development route. You know, that was going to make that fun. You know, here you've just you've done this on one one um, planet. Now you're off to another platform. You know, another planet to do it again. Mm. You know, what what's the what's harder with the next planet than with the yeah. previous planet you know where, where's the challenge coming from well you'd have um, to evacuate wouldn't you you'd have to build ships to evacuate um and then get as many people off the planet as you could before you got destroyed because we got as far as making the the threat i can bring the threat into the game because i wanted to make a kind of i wanted to make an alien that looked really really alien yeah i wanted to make something that because you saw these in the start menu i wanted to make something that looked like a sort of ocean bottom feeder you know <laughs> like so, yeah, just something yeah. that just eats fungus that just um follows you around and uh, it's fucking off over there follows you around and just um spends its time eating everything it finds you know mm -hmm. mercilessly there's no intelligence behind it whatsoever you know so i kind of conceived of this like fractal alien where each level of the alien has got like 10 smaller aliens on its back and i like you know? that you know i like i like that you see each that of those have got cool. 10 more on there yeah it reminds me of Darwinia a lot, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. Like Darwinia had these sort of unthinking virus monsters, you know, that would just split up and then they would reproduce in their own weird way, you know? Well, that was all quite cool. It started to get a little bit like I, I struggled to make it feel like it was from the same universe. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't yeah. quite look right either. I always felt that. Yeah. I, I always felt it was a little bit jarring, but maybe, maybe we could have dealt with that further, you know? <laughs> yeah, they do demolish stuff. Quite quite a rate. Yeah, so that, so you would have like 50 years or something, you know? In each system, you would have 50 years before these things would come through mm -hmm. and would just start eating everything again, you know? And you would have to move on to the next planet until you eventually figured out how to stand your ground against them. And that was the thinking. But we never really got to making that work, you know? And there's a lot, of, like, a lot of this stuff is just kind of... There's, this happens a lot in these prototypes. There's often a lot of ideas that are started and then they don't really work, you know, and then they get left yeah. in a kind of half-finished state. Um, and then you just move on. It's, it's sort of weird. It's a bit sad to see sometimes, you know. I, I suppose I, I felt as well as if there's, there's a simplicity of terraforming the planet you know, mm. do do this, then do that, then do this, then do that, which is which is is it, coming back to that same problem that we had before. Because it's unconstrained, you're just sort of doing the same thing, you know. Yeah. And that I struggled with as well. You know that that how do you avoid that if a then b kind of game design problem? You know, you've got a planet. 
you need to build a power supply. Once you build a power supply, you need to do this, yeah. then you need to do that, then you need to you're, do the other. You're getting at the you're, you're, you're getting at the point that there's um, there's a linear route through the game. And the, yeah, there's, and there, there's no, there, aren't, there aren't choices to make along the way. So you that's can, right. You know, this is much further along. The planet's terraformed. There's an earlier version where you where you sort of build. You're kind of stuck inside domes beforehand. Like I think I have Mars Mars domes as a good example of it. There's like a previous version, like a few hours earlier, before you've had time to colonize a planet, or you know, when it's got a toxic atmosphere. You're sort of constrained inside these like glass domes. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but I agree with you. It's it doesn't have that feeling of choice that Prison Architect had, where you could sort of decide what kind of um, what kind of place you were going to build. You know, and that's it, right. And it didn't have that. Um, it didn't have that open feeling of like anything could happen because the the list of things that you could build was fairly constrained, and they don't really interact with each other enough. That's right. Enough that's right. So you can you can build quite a lot of stuff, but it's kind of all it's kind of all necessary. So as a result, kind of none of it's necessary. If you That's get right. Yeah, you're absolutely. never really making a choice. You kind of you're sort of building on something, and then you're building on something, and then you're building on something. But you're always doing it the same. Whereas games that have like this is this is closer to like a forex strategy game where you're kind of resource gathering, and then yeah. you're and then you're expanding, and then you're conquering, and then you're sort of holding your hegemony over the area, but yeah. without any of the kind of like civilization would always be different every time based on where you put your first cities. That's right. You know? That's right. And that complexity would come because your your layout of the world was so different every time. That's right. And I tried to make it like that. I tried to make it so that everyone on these planets was a little bit different and the asteroid belts were different and you'd get different scenarios and depending on what you found on your planet it would affect what kind of game you played. But somehow it, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somehow it doesn't work, you know. Yeah, it needed to be that's the thing, you know, it because it looks like in the earlier, um, the earlier levels, it looks like you're starting to play a strategy game, you know. Mm. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And we well, sort of are. Yes, in exactly. Some, in some of the levels, you're playing a sort of tower defense game. Yeah. Rather than strategy, I guess. And in some of the levels, you're playing a, a straight up Factorio resource gathering and processing type game. And yeah. then again, we're playing a sort of colony building game. We had that long discussion. In OM, didn't we about colony building, like and how I just wanted it to be very removed and hands off. Yeah. Um, and and somehow the like I feel I feel like I'm not like you. I actually love I love this. I love the programming interface, and I love the robot design. Obviously, it's all you place all the graphics and stuff, but it's not that. But I, but I, and I love the planets and stuff, but it just doesn't fit together. That's you know, right, yeah. The, the yeah. bit, and I love the I even love the alien, but the bits yeah. don't fit together somehow. Yeah, you know? I agree, I agree, and I, and I think that the to me the programming language is a is a great end game feature. You yeah. know, it feels as if like once you've emerged and you've played through the campaign or whatever, and you're into a sandbox or however we're going to do it, then you get, you know, you really get open to the mechanics of of what you can do with these things. Yeah. And then and then they can you can really go mad and try and explore that creativity. Well, That's then, what it felt like well, to me rather than That might be where the core problem is because you mentioned earlier about core gameplay and I agree with you 100%, right? That a, a game must have a core gameplay. Um and in Prison Architect, you know, the core gameplay is nothing to do with building prisons mm-hmm. actually. It's just about the simple act of of issuing commands to construct things and then watching your workmen run around and do it. It's just very satisfying and it underpins a lot of different games, including Prison Architect. Um, and I don't think you can hold the programming back or the robot design because I think this is the core game in, in Spacebots. Yeah. Robot programming and robot design is the core game. And that is actually why I ended up abandoning it because... I think the other way around to you. I think that by the time you've got to the end of the, um, the by the time you've got to the end of the scenarios, you've actually programmed most of the robot types that you need. You've actually programmed you've programmed a, a driller and a gatherer, and you've programmed robots to move resources from one place to another, and maybe you've programmed some defensive robots, and then you don't need any more. <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah. So you've you've hit the end, and that the language. The language is always designed to be limited, but it is actually quite limited. Um, so, by trying to make it easily accessible for you know non-programmers, I actually 
did its did its legs in a little bit, um, because the times when I've thought of something really advanced that you could do with these robots, the language doesn't support it. Um, so once you're out the scenarios and you're into the sandbox, the robot programming just becomes not a thing, you know. Like you don't once you're playing the game at this level, you don't do any robot programming anymore, and um, I don't think a game can survive its core gameplay vanishing. That's right. That's right. It's like two different games <laughs> after ten you know, hours. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you know you're watching the, the the start of it and watching the the robots and thinking, okay, this is interesting. You know, maybe that interface needs a bit of tweaking. But the direction it goes then is back to stamping down. Yeah. Um, it goes you know, to factorial need, construction again. Yeah. Resourcing. You need power, so stamp down power source. You know. Um, yeah. Exactly. Re- collect this resource. Mm. Convert resource A into B, which is just not enough. Mm. You know, there, there needs to be. It just it doesn't have that meaningful set of um, set of choices. Yeah, yeah. It's um, and it's and it was painful because I um, this was May, May two thousand and eighteen. I started this one, I think, according to my notes, and um, I worked on it for a, a whole year actually, um, and for a long time I was convinced that this was Introversion's next big game. You know, mm-hmm. this was a they're all quite painful, but this one was particularly painful to accept defeat on, you know, and yeah. to, to accept that actually it was it was broken on quite a fundamental level, and the programming wasn't going to support the end game, and that um, the construction wasn't really going well enough, and ultimately to give up on it. Yeah, before we uh, call it quits then, I've got one last thing to show you. This is cool. right at the very end of the project when I was thinking about, well, I was quite sure I was going to quit on this game. Um, and I invented a scenario called Singularity, and I just think it's really cool. Right? So the idea here is that this is a normal star system, right? just like any of the others that we've been looking at. But at the center, we've got uh, you know, a gargantua from Interstellar. <laughs> yeah. right? I've got a giant black hole with a nice big accretion disk. Right? So... Everything's normal, right? The planets are all still here. You can still you can still build here and you can still, you know, move to here and all that kind of stuff. But there's a time dilation effect applied to everything. Right? So here's our ship. Time moves at, you know, speed one, where we happen to be. Yeah. Right. And um, very much in the vein, I think I actually had just watched Interstellar when, yeah, yeah, <laughs> when this I, happened. Yeah, right? yeah. So if I now fly towards the singularity like this, um, You'll notice as I get closer, time continues to move normally for us, but time starts to, the amount of time that passes for everyone else further away from the black hole speeds up. Right? This is such a good idea for a game, but again, is, within the it? context of this, it's just, it's too much of a... Yeah. So, so, you know. so once we're, we're all the way inside here now, we're actually on the accretion disk, and you, you see yeah. the planets on the outside are whizzing by. Time dilation is actually being simulated per object within this star system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so 25 years is going by for... If you, so if you left some robots out here, all the way out on here, they would be going like crazy, working away. Um, whereas you are rusting all the way up in, and yeah, w- rusting up and falling apart. Whereas you are all yeah. the way down here on the inside. I just thought to myself, like that's another fucking classic, brilliant idea, right? That just doesn't fucking work in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. quite frustrating. But why has no one made a game about um, about uh, time dilation? Due to general relativity, it feels like there's a whole there's a whole game in there yeah. in that one idea. A general you know? relativity video game, right? Yeah, yeah, Honestly, yeah. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. So, if you want to play a general relativity video game, you can. If you head over to introversion.co.uk forward slash prototypes, and you can buy the bundle that includes uh, space bots. That's the video we've been talking about. You'll also get access to Order of Magnitude, which was the uh, prototype we made a video about uh, last month, and all of the other prototypes that we're going to release in this series. Uh, It's going to be at least another eight, I think, mate. Is that right? Yeah. That, that, at least that's there's quite a lot. I'm and, actually not um, 100% sure exactly how many there are going oh, to be. We'll, we'll few, see how the series yeah, goes. A few more, a few more. <laughs> um, and when you do so, you'll get a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling inside, knowing that every single penny we make from uh, from these prototypes, we're going to donate to War Child, which is a fantastic charity that does all sorts of things connected with children in war. So um, if you can afford to put your, your hand in your pocket, there's £5 minimum. Um, but other than that, if you can go a little bit more, War Child would appreciate it. <laughs>